model steam engines top tip time at part 75. This is a compilation video showing modifications to a Clarkson vertical engine that was bought online by a friend of mine. The problem being when you bid on a photograph you don't know what you're going to get. Having a quick cursory glance at the engine it's not too badly machined, the flywheel actually looks alright and the crankshaft looks okay too. Could it be that I've finally got an engine to resurrect that is okay? Well actually no, I've already had a look at it before I took the video. This engine was bought from the auction site that we all know and love and it wasn't a lot of money, it was quite cheap for what it is so I'm just not going to complain. I've seen a lot worse than this. I'm actually quite impressed by the little wheel. It looks like a ship's wheel. It doesn't move the valve gear at all. It gets about halfway and then jams solid. So at the moment the engine's not capable of reversing, if it was capable of running at all. I did put some compressed air into the engine prior to making this video, but it did absolutely nothing other than made a hissing noise. If you look at this drop arm that I'm handling at the moment, this causes the expansion link to slide back and forth, and it's very nicely drilled and very decorative, and that's really all it is, because it's not tightly fastened to the shaft that is supposed to turn it. Also, the other shaft, I think the geometry is a little bit out. I'll look at that in detail later. When I look at these old engines for the first time, I try and get into the mindset of the builder, and on this one, I'm not quite sure what's going on. Until I look at the steam inlet, and I notice that it's just a shallow bush pressed into the hole, and in the hole there isn't a thread at all. The exhaust was even worse. This bush was very, very shallow, it just fell out. And then I realised what had gone on. I'm pretty sure that the builder was supposed to drill these holes, tapping size, for 3 8 by 32 threads per inch. And I think he got a bit confused and drilled the hole 3 8 of an inch. So instead of fixing it, he just put a brass plug in. I may be wrong on this because I don't have a drawing for this engine. It's something that I would have done in my early years. Looking around the cylinder, you will notice that the holes for the cylinder head studs have been drilled too deep, and these are very unsightly, so I really can't live with it. I'm going to clad the cylinder. And one method is to use strips of mahogany all the way around the cylinder, held in place with brass bands. There's a little bit of play on the big end, but there's a lot more play on the small end. Yes, as you can see, it's really wobbly. You can actually see it better on the video than you can with the naked eye. The workmanship on this engine is not too good and not too bad, it's about sort of average. There are mistakes that have been corrected and obvious mistakes. This worries me a little bit, it's very bad workmanship, the cylinder cover has been turned a lesser diameter than the cylinder itself. And when the bottom cylinder cover has been fitted, the studs have distorted the metal on the cover, and this just looks a bit naff. So I think a nice brass band might be in order, I don't know till I get the engine apart. The bottom cylinder cover's going nowhere, it's held very tightly to the cylinder, so that's a good thing. But the best thing about this engine is this really nice little hand wheel. I do quite like that. The first thing to do is to remove the steam chest cover, and to do this I have to remove all these nuts and lock nuts. Great fun. This took ages, I've shortened the sequence because it really was tedious. And finally, with the edge of a sharp knife, I just lever off the steam chest cover to break the seal. But in this case there wasn't a seal, there is no gasket present, and this is looking more and more like the engines never run. I've scribed on a little arrow to tell me which is the top. It will save me time later when I put the engine back together. OK, then it's time to thread this hole in the steam chest cover. And I do this by first of all drilling it tapping size. I'm drilling it tapping size for half inch by 32 threads per inch. Once the hole was drilled tapping size for half inch by 32, and I did this in two passes with two different size drills, I thread it while it's still in the machine. That way I know that the thread is precisely square to the main casting. And once I've got the thread well down into the casting, I remove the whole assembly from the machine, and I do it by hand, it's just quicker, quicker and easier. Now it's time to make the brass fitting to fit into the hole in the steam chest. And what I'm doing here is turning a piece of brass down to half an inch outside diameter. When I get what I think to be as close to half an inch, 
I make a cut that may be under half an inch like you see here. I'm labouring this somewhat for the video because I'm very aware that a lot of beginners to machine tools look at this and think, hmm, that's interesting. Anyone who knows what I'm doing, just fast forward to the next bit. Yes, that's nearly there. One more fine cut, I think. And then the micrometer fits on like this. Not a good idea. Don't do this. Do not leave micrometers clamped to the work. I'm aiming this next bit at people who do not have too much professional engineering equipment at hand. This is just an ordinary cheap and nasty die holder. You get these in sets and things. And with the help of the tailstock chuck to keep the die in position while it starts, I get quite a good thread on this piece. In this clip I'm using a centre drill to make the initial hole in the work. Then I'm using a drill, I think it's a 3 16th drill this, to just drill a hole through the middle to let the steam in. Don't forget to do this because if you just make the thing solid, it'll look quite nice but no steam will be able to get into the steam chest. With the hole safely drilled down the middle of the piece, it's time now to work on the outside diameter. I'm reducing this bar to approximately 5 8 of an inch. With the lathe on auto feed, I'm turning down the bar to 5 8 of an inch diameter for approximately an inch and a half of its length. But now, because I have a musician's brain and not an engineer's brain, I've broken off turning down the 5 8 part, and I'm just making a small recess at the end of the thread, so it fits perfectly up against the steam chest cover. And then, it's back to turning the piece to approximately 5 8 of an inch diameter for a distance of approximately 1 and a half inches all the way down the piece of brass. I'm showing this piece of simple turning in real time because a lot of comments that I get say not enough machining in this one. So in this one there's going to be plenty of machining and less painting you'll be pleased to hear. And then once I've got the piece to the right length I'm now parting it off with my little parting tool. Here it goes. Just about, yes it's gone. I've turned the piece round in the chuck now and I'm holding the work by the turn part, the 5 8 diameter part, not by the thread. This is very, very important. You could hold it by the thread if it was a very light machining operation, but this is more of a heavier machining operation, and we're going to be cutting a thread on this end. And if you hold it by the thread at the other end, it's likely to spin round in the chuck and destroy the thread at the other end. So always hold the part you're working on in the chuck on the most substantial part of the work. I don't think I need to go into great detail about how to cut the thread on this end, as it's almost identical to the way I cut the thread on the other end. This thread is smaller, it's 3 8 by 32 threads per inch, and it's going to take a union nut that allows the use of a quarter inch pipe. Now you see me using a tailstock die holder, which is the accepted method, or the one that I use, for cutting most threads in the lathe. In this clip, I'm shortening the thread to the finished length. What I don't want to see is lots of thread after the union nut when the union nut's in place. I silver soldered a union nipple to a piece of copper pipe and here I'm fitting it to the engine. I haven't cleaned the pipe up because it's only a temporary thing. Normally at this point I'd be getting quite excited but I'm really not excited with this engine in any shape, way or form. The more I look at it, like a lot of these engines that you see me repair, the worse it gets. This has been made by a raw beginner. Maybe a school, maybe some sort of an apprentice piece. Parts of the engine are reasonably well made and other parts are just an absolute disaster area. The timing is completely out, it's not going to run. With compressed air applied to the inlet, nothing happens. There's plenty of oil in there, it's just blown straight out of the exhaust port, which means that the valve isn't in place properly, which also means the piston is blowing. We shall see when I dismantle it further. But never mind, it keeps me off the streets. And that is it for this episode. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.